noise. All right, come on. You, <laughs> come on, you're the one with all right, 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 right. 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 Right now, we're nice and quiet, okay. though, right? You so it came down to where um, Nino and Roy brought me out to Matty Rager's restaurant in uh, Union City, uh, New Jersey, and introduced me to him. And I was going to have to pick up the VIG every week. Now, the VIG, you got to remember now, the VIG on 250 grand yeah. was... 1750 a week that this guy had to come up with to pay the VIG. And that's basically renting the money. What's you know, the VIG? The VIGRISH. It's, it's the interest we charge. So, in other words, if I loan you 250000 at, say, three points, you have to pay me $1,750 a week to keep the money. It doesn't knock anything off the principal, you know, until you pay me back the 250 grand. So I started, you know, meeting with Maddie and stuff like this. And Maddie became like, you know, aside from him trying to get me killed, but we'll get into that later, um, he became like a business associate of mine. And uh, I found out that Maddie was one of the biggest cocaine movers in the city. He had all the connections with the Cubans and Queens up on Bell Boulevard, and, you know. So I had another partner, who I don't want to mention his name. Um, and me, him, and Maddie kind of got together. And then during a the heist that I did on Long Island, um, it was really strange. We took off this dope deal in Long Island, and uh, when we were leaving the place, there was this girl sitting in the bedroom reading the Cosmopolitan magazine that we had missed, which was kind of unprofessional. But she was just stunning and gorgeous and she's reading this cosmopolitan and when we were going to leave we had you know the marks were taped up in, in the kitchen chairs and stuff like that um, and when we were going to leave I looked in there and saw her and I started to move toward the door and I said no 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 and I moved back and I looked back in the bedroom and I asked her, I said, hey, you want to stay with these jerk-offs or you want to come with us? And she put down the cosmopolitan and she looked at me and closed it, put it aside, and she said, give me five minutes, I'll come with you guys. Um, that was the fourth member of the Hole in the Wall gang. The fifth member was part of the Mayo crew, Henry Borelli. All right. Uh, and then we had some associates, but Hole in the Wall came from where we rented a penthouse in Fort Lee, New Jersey, right on the river. And that was Hole in the Wall. No one knew that location but us. Nobody. And that's where we worked at it, that's where we partied, that's where we had all our, you know, it was our business base. And at the time, we were very big through Maddie at Studio 54. I mean, we could get in and get out of Studio 54 with like, I mean, I could bring an entourage in there when the lines were all the way, you know, in, in those days, you got to remember, the police actually blocked off 54th Street, you know. Um, we could just walk up, because Maddie used to give Mark, who was the guy that said you could come in or you couldn't come in, um, a Mercedes to use, because that was one of our businesses. We had a car dealership, 
up on uh, in Jerome Avenue in the South Bronx. So we he'd give him a Mercedes, and then you know when it came time to sell that car, we say Mark, you know we got to buy it for this car. Boom, he'd give up that one. We give him another one. So we had carte blanche in Mercedes. What we uh, in Studio Fifty Four? What we didn't understand, at, well, what I didn't understand at the time, was that this particular woman that I had met, who I developed a hell of a relationship with, um, was the Quaalude Queen. All right, she could get more pharmaceutical Quaaludes, Lemon Seven Fourteens. 500 sealed in the jaw than anyone in the city. Um, she worked with a pharmacist, Saul Hellman, who later got, later got taken down by the feds big time. Um, and he had a pharmacy down on Knickerbocker Avenue. And he would order these things, and she had them just wrapped around her finger, where He'd order them, you know, legitimately, and give them to her. So basically, what happened is we started. We we didn't start. We took over the Quaalude market at Studio Fifty Four, and in the seventies, it was a hell of a market. I mean, we were getting these jars for five hundred dollars a piece, you know, and there was five hundred pills in a jar. And she was moving them at ten dollars a piece, you know. So we were paying five hundred dollars for it. We were getting our return was five thousand, right. and we actually gave it a nickname, the Quaalude Queen. Right. As a matter of fact, for one Christmas, I bought her a solid gold lemon seven fourteen on a chain, you know. Um, and we did various things, you know. We did a lot of robberies. We set up a lot of dope dealers, you know, and took them down. Um, what, what type of robberies? Armed robberies. Like people or houses or dealers? Drug, drug dealers, dealers. Okay. yeah. You'd uh, set them up then? Well, we used Cheryl to set them up because Cheryl, you couldn't, you know, if Cheryl hit on you, you couldn't resist that, you know. So Cheryl was, and Cheryl was the, I mean, Cheryl would participate. I mean, she'd have the 38 in her hand and point it at people's heads, you know. I mean, she was something. And uh, we did a lot, and if, if we needed, like, extreme violence, then it was up to me and Henry. Got to edit that. Um, and if you know, shit had to come down that way. But one thing I can honestly say is that probably in over 150 robberies, we never hurt a person. We never hurt anyone. You know, because we were pros. We knew how to do it. We knew how to make the moves. We knew how to secure the location. And it worked for us. Um, 